It's April and it's Prevention Month, and I'm joined today by a guest from the New Hampshire Children's Trust to discuss that. I, I'm AJ Kirsten, and you're listening to the New England Take. Be sure to check out the NewEnglandTake.com as well as our YouTube channel. Do a search for at New England Take. A uh, link is also all, all obviously available at the NewEnglandTake.com. If you're interested in pr- producing content for the for the site. Maybe you uh, want to start a new article series or something like that. Please do reach out. The New England Take at gmail.com. All right. Thank you so much to Becky Burke, who's the impact director at the New Hampshire Children's Trust, for joining the show. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to be uh, here. So, nhchildrenstrust.org if anyone wants to check out your site, but give the elevator pitch. What is the New Hampshire Children's Trust? Yeah. So the New Hampshire Children's Trust is a statewide agency. We are the the governor's designated uh, child abuse, um, community-based child abuse prevention lead. So we work with um, agency, with with the family resource centers and agencies and families across the state, uh, really to work um, what we call upstream as far into prevention as we can. um, And uh, we don't provide any direct services ourselves, but we do leverage um, all of our um, uh, you know, funding and communications toward the community and toward the center to, to really try to make it a difference and uh, make sure that families have what they need and that children can thrive. And that basically goes directly into Prevention Month. I, I mean, what does that mean and uh, what does your organization do when this comes around? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's all hands on deck. And um, uh, essentially, Prevention Month is an opportunity to um, re-emphasize uh, with everyone the importance of, of a prevention. And, and you know, prevention is a funny thing, right? Because sometimes when we think about child abuse, we think about, oh, well, that's DCYF. Like DCYF kind of manages, you know, child abuse. But we're trying to change the way that's viewed um, and and to really think not only of agencies and providers, but ourselves as we are prevention because we all interact. We all either are families, part of families, or we interact with families and kids. And, um, uh, and those interactions can go a long way toward helping a parent feel less stressed and more supported, right? Small acts of kindness go a long way. Um, uh, you know, families might need concrete supports. They might need, you know, some groceries or they might need, uh, heaven forbid, uh, a night out, <laughs> right? That, yeah. And and um, and so we're really trying to change people's viewpoint of prevention as something out there that other people and other agencies do to really embrace what what we can do and what's in our purview to do um and that's that's easy that's really low-hanging fruit yeah i feel like that's especially important in in modern times we talk about the internet age all the cultural impacts that's had people moving online like you mentioned dcyf basically if it's reached that point you are years behind what what could have been the prevention measure that would that would have right. stopped some horribleness that might have happened in someone's life that could have been no one in particular's fault it could have been the fault of many individuals it could have just been a systemic issue of um of poverty even outside of poverty like people associate with poverty and, and drugs and things like that but there, there's many ways that right. um having a community coming together kind of sets people in the right direction well it- that is a really good observation. And part of what we're looking at now is really trying to disentangle this notion of neglect from poverty, right? Uh, because a lot of a lot of people who notice um, children who don't have what they need, uh, they, they don't really know where to turn or how to help. And so this this child needs needs something and they're concerned. So they call DCYF, right? Um, well, but aren't there other alternatives? And and so one of the alternatives that that we um, that we really promote is this fabulous network of family resource centers around the state, who are really they're they're there in the community. They're community based and they're really designed to help families where they are. And uh, and they get the fact that 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 life is stressful enough before you're a parent, <laughs> right? And then you're a parent. Um, and, uh, and there aren't any manuals and, you know, how are we supposed to do this? And the other really interesting thing too, you know, when you think about, I mean, I think about my own parenting too. 
my experience was that I never felt more alone and isolated than I did when my kids were really, really young, like between zero and three, right? I was a parent. I was trying to figure it out for the first time. I didn't know what I didn't know. Um, didn't really have a lot of, you know, close family living, you know, living nearby. And boy, did I wish I had known about family resource centers then, right? J j just, you know, just to feel connected with other parents and to ask what might have been a stupid question, but no questions are stupid when it comes to raising kids, right? And 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 so this whole concept of of you know prevention, like normalizing that parenting can be confusing and stressful and hard, um, uh, and it's especially stressful when when you know when families don't have what they need. You know, you think about Maslow's hierarchy of need, and you have to you have to make sure you've got a roof over your head and food. You know, uh, you know food on your table before you can really think about, um, you know, some of those other, you know, some of those, you know, some of those other needs. So, so it really runs the gamut. Um, and, uh, and, and it's prevention with a capital P. So what sort of specific programs would, would a family resource center offer? I've never heard of something like that before. It's, it's fascinating to hear it's, there's something like that. Like I like similar for, for my family, like my, my wife and I are three hours away from all our family or extended mm -hmm. family. So when, yeah. when they would come, I mean, you, you have this balance between the stress and anxiety of family coming to visit. <laughs> and just the fact you're already stressed that you got right. this kid and now you got to, it's like, what's this, what's this going to be like when everyone comes together? What does it mean? And then you travel to go to them. It's three times more stressful so it's right uh, i feel it's very important to kind of make sure as a parent you step outside that that bound and right. go into do things with your community yeah yeah absolutely so, so um uh you know family resource centers are are um, very much rooted in their local communities so um they are not cookie cutters um uh you know no one family resource center is just like another but they do have some common you know common elements um, they all very much believe in the principles of family strengthening, right? That, that every family has strengths and to build on those. So, um, uh, you know, some examples of some programs. So one, for instance, is a kinship navigation program, right? Uh, so sometimes kids, um, uh, you know, uh, parents go through some, you know, through some rough times and, you know, relatives or, you know, what we call fictive kin step in. Um, there's a whole program that supports grandparents and aunts and uncles and fictive kin who have kids in their care that they didn't anticipate being in their care. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so, um, uh, you know, that's one, they run parenting classes, they run uh, child and parent play groups. Um, they, they run all kinds of um, uh, uh, home visiting and outreach, uh, especially for those newer parents, right? They've got an infant or a toddler at home and they're trying to figure it out, right? Mm -hmm. So all kinds of programming that is really designed to, um, you know, to be supportive because that, that's what parents need. So I'm um, looking at your uh, prevention and partnership webpage, and it mentions the their five protective factors. And it, they let, let's dive into that a little bit because I feel like some, we talk about this systemic uh, approach to things get some negative press because of the culture war nonsense. Like, no, yeah. well, they're yeah. they're. There's reason you can use that word in productive ways like this. Like I, I know my audience that listen to this, so like they may they may get stuck in such things. But like no, like there there's legitimate structure to make sure your society and community and your family is set up in a way so your so children and their parents and kin are able to succeed. Right. Right. So, um, so the protective factors are really, um, I mean, every person and every family experiences some stress, right? That, I mean, that just goes without saying. So the protective factors are really those, those pieces that enable um, a family and a child to uh, kind of get through, um, through a challenging time. So, uh, you know, so the protective factors, for instance, are social connection, Right. Mm -hmm. Parents feeling isolated, not knowing where to turn, not having a neighbor or a friend or a relative. Social connections are huge. And a family resource centers, you know, that's part of the reason that they offer a lot of opportunities, you know, to do social connection. Um, concrete supports. So uh, food um, or um, even diapers. I mean, kids go, you know, infants and toddlers go through so many diapers. So many. 
just just <laughs> trying to keep up with the diapers, right? Um, diapers, uh, food, housing assistance, utilities. So, so, you know, again, family resource centers help families figure out what might be available to help them through a tough time with those pieces. Um, uh, you know, social emotional competence of children, which essentially means that children um, uh, feel loved, they feel a sense of belonging, they can manage their own emotions, right? And they're well on their way to growing into uh, uh, into adults that are well adjusted and and that can um, uh, and that can contribute to society, right? That that that's you know that's really that piece of it. Uh, um, knowledge of parenting and child development. Again, we don't know what we don't know, right? And when when <laughs> when we first have kids, it can be a little overwhelming. Um, I remember, uh, you know, my mother when when I you know when I gave birth, my mother gave me a uh, a book, and I'm like, Mom, when am I ever going to read a book? I was in that book all the time, <laughs> all the time, um, because I I you know I don't know, I didn't know. Um, and then the fifth, um, and then the fifth. Uh, um, you know, protective factor is a parental resilience, which is is the ability to bounce back, right? We all experience stress, we all experience setbacks, um, but the ability to, to stay calm and kind of figure out how to create a path forward, that's, you know, that's an essential skill that, that, that keeps the family balanced and, you know, unstable. So, those are what we call the protective factors, but it's all geared around um, uh, around helping the family um, feel grounded and the child in um, uh, in an environment where they can really grow and thrive. Yeah, I feel like this is so important. You ha this is part way down. You have a section called Moments of Joy on this site. Yeah. I, I feel like we it's. A lot yeah. of these months where you're having these awareness things like, oh, it gets a little doom and gloomy. It gets like, oh, God, I got to figure out, I really should think about all these important things. Like, it's like, no, you're parenting. You, sh you should also be sure to consider the joy and happiness. Make sure your kid is having the these these things during their childhood that stands with them to either, even if they don't necessarily remember exactly what they did or were or ate that day. Like, it's like, no, I had, I had a great day with my family doing something. Yeah, absolutely, and and uh, and I think that there there are more and more um, families um, that uh, if they can, um, instead of this is you know this is a, you know such an interesting co interesting concept instead of giving uh, gifts like oh I'm I, you know I'm going to give a sweater or I'm going to give it a right. Um, give experiences yeah. right i mean you know the ability to go to a performance um parents and kids together or you know the ability to go to a park or to a museum or to take a trip all those things are are, are um are just amazing you know amazing experiences that 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 families can enjoy together right um and time is often a factor Right. I mean, so many of us work and we work full time or more than full time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just being able to find the time, you know, to do that, which, again, goes back to the community um, and um, neighbors and whether people are practicing those small acts of kindness and helping helping carve out some time, you know, for families to to spend together. Yeah, and take advantage of things that are just going on in your community is so important. Like, it, like yeah. I always talk about how lucky I am that I get to live in downtown Conquer because, like, yeah. my, my spoiled little kid gets to walk out and very close be able to just go take part in street festivals and things that are going on. But, but I mean, even right. little things like I, I one day, I think it was, think it was last spring. I, I had him take his bike, bike he biked over to school, and, and I walked following him along. And he's like, mm -hmm. we should do this more often. It's like, kid, we did this all last year. You don't, <laughs> you just don't remember. But it's like, just remember, it's like, they don't, they don't necessarily remember. It's like, oh, I did something before. But they remember the experience that they're having now, and that stays with them. And you just, you just keep up with it. It, it. it means a lot to them. Right. And um, that's absolutely true. And as a parent... I still, to, I mean, my, my, you know, my kids are long, long grown and gone, but, um, but uh, as a parent, I still have these vivid memories of both when other, all kids have some meltdowns, right? I still have very vivid memories of when one of my kids was having a meltdown and someone else was mm, 
not very kind about it um, and made me feel really like a terrible parent. Uh, that stuck with me. And on the flip side, I so clearly remember just a smile or a nod or an encouragement that, yeah, you know, I mean, you know, kids can be tough and um, uh, traveling with kids, mm. right. Being on, being on planes, um, uh, all those kinds of experiences, just being a little patient uh, with, you know, with parents, because essentially we want to treat parents the way we want parents to be treating their kids right with patience and grace and kindness and support so all right in the last few minutes here i want to be sure to dive into uh, your 2023 free resource guide that's available at nhchildrenstrust.org what is in this Oh, it, so this this is a great piece. Um, uh, it's on our website. You can download it. I love it because uh, it's really designed to be a resource for parents, but also fun for kids, right? So there's places for kids to color and, and you know, to draw things out. Um, but it's also tips and resources and, you know, good books to read, both for adults and for kids and all kinds of things. And um, th there is... A, 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 there are all kinds of you know pieces in here that I love that that is all around prevention. But there's one page in here that 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 I that is my favorite, um, and it's ten loving gifts for families, hmm. right? And uh, and it's some of the you know and it's some of the things that we've talked about, right? You know the gift of time, the gift of you know lending a helping hand, uh, groceries, diapers, uh, connections, right? Um, community resources, concrete support, fun and joy, um, voice, uh, and just encouraging words, right? So, so um, this this is a great resource for um, um, all of us in the community around prevention, um, but, you know, but for parents and, and the children. Yeah, definitely. So be sure to definitely check that out, nhchildrenstrust.org, if you want to check that out. Also, of, of course, as we've I've had Nathan Fink on before, the Check Out New Hampshire Family Now podcast, which is over on the site, which is fantastic. And Leah Plunk, Professor Leah Plunkett of Harvard was, was on there as the previous guest, and uh, she's been on my show. I've known her for, for many years through my yeah. previous employment at the law school, so be sure to check out that episode. Mm -hmm. um, but what, what, do you, what, what do you do over there, Becky, specifically? So, um, so well, my title is impact and evaluation director, right? So, so, um, so uh, essentially, um, part of my job is to be able to answer the so what question, right? So there are all these, you know, family resource centers out there that are doing fabulous work with with the families, and uh, and and um, and so we know how many families, we know in what towns, we know how many hours of service. But the question always is, well, so what, right? So great, you you've been providing all these services, um, and uh, and so part of what we actually measure for for outcomes and for evaluation is changes in the protective factors, right? Because because if those if those are improving then uh, overall, then environments for kids are improving too. Yeah, if you don't have data, you basically can't do anything, in my opinion, especially if you want to get you right. want to get the darn government involved, which I'm, I'm, I'm a part of now. I should be make very clear when I'm <laughs> when I'm crapping on it. Uh, the, <laughs> um, you you got you to gotta have the numbers to back it up and say, hey, we're doing something productive in the community. And it right. seems like something that Children's Trust has been able to do. Right. And, and you know, again, the... The promise of working upstream, right, uh, before, because once you have a problem, it's so much easier to prevent something than to fix it once it's, once it's, a, once it's, you know, um, an issue. So, so for us, really working upstream is, um, is our bread and butter. Uh, and that's firmly where we believe we all should be and where we can all make a difference. Becky Burke of the New Hampshire Children's Trust is the impact director over there. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. To the New England Take, I'm your host, AJ Kirstead, the New England Take.com. Be sure to go over there, like, and subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. And if you're not, please go subscribe and check out the video versions of all our shows. We post them there also.